All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us this afternoon for the LiveWell School Food Initiative's third webinar, Plan Your Campaign. Uh, we will get started with that webinar real quick here, but I just wanted to give you everyone a few housekeeping items. Um, and first of all, if you have a question, you can just go up to this kind of black bar at the top of your screen and click chat. And if you can ask a question at any time, but we are going to reserve some time towards the end to kind of go over all those questions. And at that, I'm going to turn you over to Rainey. Hi, and thank you, Charlie. And um, we're really excited to have all of you join us today. This is a Live Well at School Food Initiative webinar for Colorado Food Service Directors. Today's webinar is Plan Your Campaign, and this is the third in a series of five to support your efforts to bring more customers into your cafeteria. By the way, this Live Well and its webinar, or Live Well Colorado is providing this webinar for food service directors through a grant provided by the Health Foundation. And today's presentation is on how you can create a simple, easy, effective marketing campaign plan for your program. My name is Rainey Wickstrom, and I'm a consultant for Live Well Colorado. Our objectives are today to assist you in creating your marketing campaign to provide tools for marketing your program. And really what we want to do is we want to spread great ideas across Colorado that help food service directors like you increase school meal participation. I'd like to suggest that you grab a notebook and a pen just so that you can capture some of the ideas to begin creating your own campaign plan as we move along today. So just time for a quick temperature check. Do any of these sound like something you might say? Boy, I wish more students would choose my school lunch and breakfast program. Or I really need more staff participation. I'm just too busy to market my program. I'm focused on feeding kids. I have no idea where to begin, or I just need some help creating a simple marketing plan. If you selected two or more of these, then this is really the webinar for you. By the time we conclude, I think you're going to have some great ideas, some tools, and the beginnings of your own campaign plan to begin or expand whatever promotions you're currently doing now. So first off, what is a campaign plan? A campaign plan is de defined as something that's aimed at accomplishing a strategic or operational objective within a given time and space. For example, we know all too well in this current state that politicians routinely seek to gain voter support during an election cycle. We just went through that. Businesses also routinely seek new customers through advertising campaigns, especially during key moments of the year, such as holiday seasons. These would be two examples of planned campaigns. But school meal programs also need to have campaign plans to get students, staff, and the community voting for their programs with their trades. We recommend each school year that you create a campaign plan before school begins, which is why we're doing this webinar right now. We know you're busy wrapping up the year, but we want to help set you up for success as you look forward to the new school year. We're going to review a couple of these tools and steps on how to do it, and actually it can be pretty easy. We're also going to hear from two food service directors today, Dan Sharp and Shannon Williams. Dan Sharp is with District 51 in, Grand, in Mesa County, Grand Junction, and Shannon is with Uray School District. We're going to hear from them and what they've done to be successful in getting more customers into their cafeterias. We really believe that what you do is exciting and important, but we know that if you don't tell your customers why your program's wonderful, and why they should choose it, how are they going to know? So how do you create a campaign plan? When you begin to think about your own, own campaign plan, begin by reflecting on why you personally are interested in reaching more students with your program. Which of these matter most to you? Is your interest in alleviating hunger? Is it lifting stigma so that more kids feel comfortable coming in and choosing school meals? Are you really wanting and needing to get more buy-in from your staff, your parents, and community for your healthy school meal changes? Are you also trying to get more kids enjoying and benefiting from school meals and reducing food waste? Is your interest in just increasing access to healthy foods in your community, or strengthening your bottom line, or building community pride, or all of the above? 
School meals are both professional and personal for many of you. Try to get connected with why you care. Each of you has your own personal stories about school meals and why you're invested in your programs. Now that you have a few key reasons for maybe why you want to promote your program, let's start looking at a campaign plan and figure out how you can get the word out. Not all audiences are the same. In your community, there may be one or two specific audiences that you want to focus on. Maybe it's your students. Maybe it's their buy-in you need. But is it your elementary students, your middle, or your high school students? And then when it comes to parents, parents are big influencers for kids in the early grades. So do you need parents to get on board with what you're doing and invite them back to school meals to see what they look like in 2017? And how about the staff? Are they choosing to come down and enjoy the salad bar? Or is it your community members or your board members? When was the last time they actually enjoyed, saw, and tasted one of your school meals? Take a moment and just jot down which of these key audiences, one or more, that you'd like to reach. This is really one of my favorite tools that we have at the School Food Initiative. This is a campaign planning tool, and it's approximately a two-page document, almost three. And these are available to you at no cost, and they're easy to download, and this is just one of about 45 tools that we have available to you. But as you begin planning for next year, this is really a key tool. What it does is it walks you through a really simple process of identifying what are the key promotional opportunities in your district that are available to help you promote your program. It also helps you identify what channels of communication are already in your district that you can utilize to reach your audience whether it's a district website or on your menus, whether there's e-newsletters or school newsletters, social media platforms, or if there's opportunities to give presentations throughout the year. And finally, it helps you target any specific district events that happen on a regular cycle that you can plug into. And on the last page of the tool, there's an opportunity to just then select out of all these opportunities, which two or three or four or five you wanna choose for yourself to focus on this year. And again, this tool is on our website, and we're going to come back at the end and show you where to find that. On the second page of the tool, here you can see that there's also opportunities to identify what your local media opportunities are. They'll be different in each of your, communi in each of your communities. Some of you have access to television, radio, newspaper, and social media platforms, and others of you are more limited. Is also, media is something you want to really put a focus on this year. Some food service directors make a point to put out press releases to their local media at the start of each school year, showcasing new menu items, highlighting cafeteria enhancements, or any new partnerships they might have. Is there something big or small that you would like to focus on, whether it's a school garden or a student initiative or anything else exciting happening? Maybe just make a quick note of anything that comes to mind. In the next section of the tool, there's an opportunity to select school district and events that happen throughout the year. At the top of this list, you'll see back to school. And we really view this as a key opportunity for school meal promotions because it's really a time to connect with parents, students, and staff who are really excited about the upcoming new year. And in the fall, a number of food service directors pick Colorado Proud Day as another opportunity. And go ahead and just make a note if either of these might be places where you want to focus your attention this year. There are many more as well. And on the next slide, we have a list of some of the key events that food service directors focus on. Another one would be like holiday meals, Thanksgiving, or more in the December time frame. PTO, PTA meetings, parent group meetings are an opportunity to connect with parents. And then there's National School Lunch Day and others. It isn't possible to select and participate in all of these, but you can just choose two or three that work for you. So that's really the first and second part of the campaign planning tool. And then this is the final part. This is where you reduce down so three to five or however many opportunities you want to select for the year. 
and decide what and who you're going to approach in utilizing which tools. You've identified your target audiences, you've identified a few communication channels, and then some specific school events that you want to focus on. In this case, this food service director chose that she wanted to enhance her website over the summertime and get some new content in there and update it. She was also going to focus on back to school, and we have some tools to help you communicate out around back to school, a letter to parents, there's a sample newsletter. And then she was interested in starting to utilize a social media platform, and she was going to work with somebody in her district who had access to social media and connect with them and see if they would begin doing some posting. And every year she has a Thanksgiving event and it was an opportunity to highlight what was on her menu that was made freshly prepared. So that's really what a campaign can look like in its most simple and or complicated form. Whatever time you have available, you can decide what works for your schedule. I hope you can see just how easy it is to just begin thinking about where you might target and put your efforts. So this is a, a snapshot of what you can find on the School Food Initiative website. Here's just a portion of the tools that we have available to you. One of our chief aims is to make it really easy for food service directors to grow and sustain their programs, and we really believe that marketing and promoting it is key to that. But we also know you don't have time to develop material yourself. And so we've created some really simple to use templates where you can just plug in information, use what's there, or modify it. For example, let's say you want to get a letter out um, about your new and exciting menu enhancements that you're planning to start this fall. We have a back to school letter template that's already written and you can just customize yourself. We have a press release tool to notify the media of anything that's happening, a special event or a chef tasting. We have talking points so that when you get in front of your staff meetings or principal meetings, you can share with them what and why you do what you do with your program. And we have many other tools just to help you communicate effortlessly and easily about your program. Next slide. So we know when it comes to events, these can be a little bit more complicated. Just a few tips there is around choosing events, identifying what you really want to accomplish, making sure you get support, selecting a date, choosing an audience, and selecting a communication channel. Each event on its own can be its own little promotion. And so because of that, next slide, we've created a checklist tool. It's basically like a grocery list so that when you get there, you know exactly what you need to do and it helps put you on autopilot so you don't have to think of all the details at the very last minute. It helps you identify what's your purpose, who do you need to get approval from, are there any schedule conflicts with other events, and it helps you just make those decisions um, in advance that can otherwise become difficult at the last minute. Since I mentioned Colorado Proud Day earlier, I just wanted to point out a couple resources because we have a big farm to school movement in Colorado, and these are some things that food service directors in Colorado have shared with us that they've done. Um, we have sourcing local flowers as centerpieces for cafeteria tables. Um, we had Ignacio School District provide a very detailed menu over on the right side featuring all of their um, Colorado Proud items. And then Dan Witt in Pueblo County, he did a great promotion with some local farmers, the DeSanti brothers, and had these um, cutouts made of them where they hold a board and feature what their local produce items are. He also was able to get some press around that, which is very positive in terms of building a positive perception around your program. And lastly, the University of Minnesota has a great video on how to promote your farm to school um, programs, and we will share that resource with you at the end as well. Some of you are still trying to convince people on why they should get on board with your school meal program, and this is a really quick little two-minute video provided by ECO, the Center for Eco Literacy and it's on making the case for um, healthy school meals. And this might be a good little um, tool for you to have in your toolbox when you're presenting your program to people in your district and your community. So when it comes to planning events, just a couple tips there. Plan out your events for the entire year. It could be just one or two. It doesn't have to be a lot. 
find out those places where you can piggyback on things that are already happening. Make sure you promote it. Uh, also a reminder to take photos because those can be utilized later for social media posts or photos on your website. Remember to invite your media. They're very anxious and excited to support you uh, and bring good news to your community. So this is an opportunity to do that for them. And then make sure you celebrate and share your successes. The USDA has a really good little guide on some marketing ideas I wanted to point out. And Action for Healthy Kids is both a national and state group, and they've been real supportive of helping food service directors in Colorado. They have some great resources and grants, and they currently have one around with some funding that can help food service directors with tasting. So you might take a look at that if you're interested. And here's just another resource. Um, the Vermont Farm to School has a taste testing, local foods and schools resource. That's a good one. And then also the Lunchbox in Boulder, Colorado has a great guide on how you can really enlist volunteers and interns to support your success. This isn't something you have to do alone. And I think the really successful food service directors know they can't and that they do need the help of other people around them. So this helps you figure out where you can maximize your supports. And we do have other toolkits on our website as well. There's one for parents, one for students, and one for food service directors. And these are just available to help bring in the support of other members of your community. Several years ago, we had Debbie Yerku on one of our webinars, and she's from Callahan School District in Colorado Springs. And she was doing a lot of work around promoting her program at the time. And um, she ended up increasing her breakfast participation by 107%. She was recognized by Hunger Free Colorado as a breakfast innovator. She did lots of other great things in her program, but I had a lot of fun working with her on her campaign plan. And she shared with me some tips that we shared at the time with our food service directors in the state. And I wanted to just bring those back. Oh, but before I do, this was really fun. Deb is one of the few people I know that has literally an event for every month. Uh, I don't suggest aspiring to this level, but she has a lot of fun. So in September, she has a homecoming event and all food served is red, white, and blue, school colors. October, she does a Halloween event. The food gets spooky names. And then there was a Dr. Seuss's birthday in March and St. Patrick's Day, everything turns green. She had a lot of fun with her events and it paid off because she was able to boost participation. So some of her suggestions that came from Deb were have fun, involve your students, listen to them, and really gather their ideas because they're your customers. She's also big on making sure her food staff is involved. And then also she's very willing to reach out and ask for help and she was the recipient of support, of much support from her peers. So thank you, Debbie, for providing those tips and suggestions. And then also, Kathy Del Tonto, she retired from the Montrose School District area. Some of her suggestions were be visible in the community, tap in and listen to the opinions of your team. It empowers them. It increases their connectedness and the feeling that they can make a difference too. When it comes to marketing, sometimes your best resources are already on your team. And then she said, I didn't invent any new resources, I just used what's out there. Her suggestion was start with something small and build on it. Thank you, Kathy, for that wisdom. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Shannon Williams. She's the food service director for a small district in Uray, Colorado, which is a beautiful mountain town over on the southwest corner of Colorado. And she's going to share with us some of the work that she's been doing to increase participation. Last year was her first year working with Livewell, Colorado, and she developed a campaign plan, and she's managed to do some great work around participation. And then following Shannon, we're going to have Dan Sharp from District 51, and he'll be sharing the work that he's also doing to increase participation on the Western Slope. So Shannon, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Rainey. Glad to be here. We're excited to have you, and I'm just going to turn it over to you now. Okie dokie. Um, we could go to the next slide. Uh, just FYI, everybody, I'm Shannon Williams, like she said, and in little, little tiny URA, Colorado, our school is pre-K through 12. Um, we have a little less than 200 students, um, and they do all, um, 
uh, mostly eat here, which is great. Um, oh gosh, how do I how do I make? Okay, so it's very small. The the thing is very small. The fight. <laughs> I'm, I'm very old. Right, hold on. Oh wait, hold it. Let me do it on full screen. Yeah. Okay. I need my reading glasses. I will try as good as possible. Uh, <laughs> so um, up is my is my campaign plan, and um, we have pretty much tackled everything right that was on. I think the first part of my plan. Um, we have, um, and then I did also added some. So when I started, we had a horrible reputation. Um, it was all heat and serve, um, even the canned bright orange nacho cheese on nacho day. Um, and people did not want to eat here. Our participation was extremely low and we had zero faculty. Uh, so I first I started with the menu um, and um, not only creating the from scratch items or using the lunchbox, which is a great tool, but um, on my menus that I sent out, I made sure that I kind of described a little better what um, I was offering so people could see it's different. Um, you know, so I would put our homemade, um, you know, oven fried chicken, or I put my aunt's meatloaf with our homemade buttermilk mashed potatoes. Um, things like that just to let them know that this is different. Um, also, I have a great administ uh, administrative assistant at the school who makes my menus very pretty as well. So that helped. Then we weren't getting any high school participation because they have off-campus lunch. So I did a, a grab-and-go for the high school students. And um, with the word out, um, we now have, I, I probably have about 25 high school students a day, um, which is actually a lot for my tiny school. <laughs> um, do what? I just laughed because you laughed. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Um, let's see. And um, so we've also uh, I've tried to get the word out um, through emails to parents and students. Um, and faculty. So sometimes um, if I feel like we have plenty of food for the day, I will send an email out to the all staff describing what we have for the day and that they should come join me for lunch. Um, another tactic I used with the faculty was um, if we had leftovers and they were still incredibly delicious, I would individually package them, put them in the teacher's lounge refrigerator and send out an email. Um, these things go over extremely well. They love it. They come see me. Um, and now I have um, uh, about 10, um, 10 to 15, 15, about 15 staff members that come eat here um, every day. So that's pretty awesome. Um, let's see. You know, I'm if, we the next slide, if we go to the next slide, I think she can see. So there's some of the things you did. Is that better? Oh. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I have such an old computer, guys. It's hysterical. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, so we've uh, updated our website. Um, also, lately, um, I have been having our IT person um, post updates, um, um, achievements, um, things, different things, uh, pictures of, like, our homemade bread or things like that. Um, I talked about the updated menu. Um, we were featured in the local paper twice, actually. Once was through our press release. The other one was just because our school board was discussing um, our food, and the person from the newspaper was at the school board meeting. So that was cool. Um, I mentioned the grab and go, which is hugely popular. Oh, and they also got a new student lounge, the high schoolers. So I've created a cart over there. So if they don't want to use, um, they're very eco-conscious here. So if they don't want to take a to-go box, they can take their tray. And they have a system where they wheel it all back over here. 
Um, so that's been helpful, just being accommodating. Um, I've just started doing a lot of social media posts on our Facebook page, and I've joined Twitter, and I'm following some food service directors to kind of see what they're doing. Mm. Um, I've never tweeted, so that'll be new. <laughs> uh, and, uh, oh, and then the other thing is our cafeteria looks like, uh, used to look like a sanitarium. Um, Seriously, it was so horrible and depressing. And um, our school, which is in a different building across the street, got a huge facelift, got all this construction money, and is really awesome. So I was like, I really want to make, I want to mirror that over here. And so I found a local artist that would um, do it for half price. Um, and she painted this amazing mural that kind of matches the really cool artwork and sayings that's in the main school. And uh, it takes up the largest wall in our um, cafeteria and looks amazing. So that's been really nice. And then we all wear uh, chef coats when it is time for service. Next slide. Um, so as a result, um, I've increased the student participation by 35%, um, the staff from zero to 26%, and sometimes it's more than that. I just wanted to be conservative. Uh, sometimes it's up to 50%, depending on what's on the menu. Um, and um, due to our marketing and our feedback and the word of mouth in my tiny town, Meals on Wheels approached me, and we now provide meals for them. So uh, that's been cool. Next slide. Um, so my tips and advice to people is, um, you know, and I, I got to say it was kind of easy for me because I've only been doing this job and in this industry for one year and four months. I was actually in culinary school when I got the job. Um, so I didn't have any preconceived notions. I kind of came as a blank slate. So um, it really was just kind of like, let's do this. Um, so I just want to say, don't be afraid to market. Um, the the response for me has been amazing. It's it's like people want to know um, what's going on. They want to be connected to what their kids are eating, um, and so that's been a really great feedback. Um, also, I brag a lot. You've got to show off. Hey, look at the amazing bread we made for today. Um, our fresh homemade oven fried chicken is fantastic. Come get it. We use Colorado potatoes for our mashed potatoes. Um, things like that um, and it works because they they don't know until we tell them that's the bottom line um, and then uh, also take ownership of your program so since I didn't have any preconceived notes notions um, I set this up to where the principal just let me do my job and um, I just am not afraid to ask for anything do something different implement stuff um, I, I'm just always trying to do what I think is best for the children in the program, and I don't really pay much attention to everything else. <laughs> so that's all I got. That's fabulous, Shannon. Thank you so much. We have questions growing for you, and we'll come back to you in just a minute. We really appreciate you sharing this with us. And now we have Dan Sharp from District 51 in Mesa County, Grand Junction. Welcome, Dan. Well, welcome. Thank you very much for asking me to attend today. Well, first of all, I'll just start off. I'm Dan Sharp. I've been with School District 51 for, gosh, 10 years now. And we went through the uh, Live Well School uh, uh, scratch transition, uh, gosh, it's been four years now. And it's been quite a change. We've made some really dramatic shifts in the program, which has given me lots of stories and content to use as we go out and market ourselves in the community. And, and that's been a really big, uh, a big thing for us. Our district is one of the, it's the 12th largest in the state. It's about 22,000 students. Our free and reduced population is about 51%. Uh, fortunately, unlike uh, poor Shannon and Ure, I've got a team of people that can help me with a lot of the other aspects of our program and, and so it's been nice that I can help play a larger communications role and, and spend more time on the marketing plan as I have some key people that can help me with other things. So 
that definitely helps. So definitely the scale of your operation definitely can make an impact. But don't let that dissuade you uh, from doing the great work that, like Shannon has shown. Um, she's on the in the trenches on the ground doing some great stuff all, all on our all on her own. So anyway, so my my key things are this: e even in a larger scale operation, it's definitely um, all of us struggle daily with um, triaging the priorities of each day and. and uh, managing our operations and then managing all the different things to do your marketing campaign and your program. I try to spend time at the end of the school year as things are winding down. I start kind of building and doing some research on websites. What are some of the stories and content pieces I'd like to uh, uh, talk about going into next school year? I save a folder of that information and just kind of start putting that together. Uh, but the main thing is, is I, I look at your campaign as just kind of like for me, it's been, I like to do this annual newsletter piece, and I'm not sure, Rainy, we can get that sent out to everybody, a PDF of the one that we just did last year. But I've been doing that for several years, and it's basically a full-color brochure that I help write the content. Typically, I pick four to six stories, um, a couple of which are usually tied to annual things that we need to do as food service directors, such as like breakfast promoting. I'll usually find an article on breakfast or an infographic that I find on some of the USDA websites and use that in that piece. But the annual newsletter piece, I look at it as my one power tool that I can use to get out in a direct mail campaign that goes to all district households at the start of the school year. It's a great way to catch the attention of parents. It's got beautiful pictures, short story content that hopefully engages them as a reader to, to, to see and look at it and go, wow, school food is not what I thought of it was. And then hopefully to make that decision to, to, to not pack sack lunches and to consider your program. Uh, the second thing is just identifying the strengths in your program. What are the things that you do well? Everybody out there across the state, all of us have different skill sets. All of us have different things that we're really good at. And I think you need to look at your program. What are the things that you do well that you want to talk about? That's always a great way to look at when you're building your story content. But on this annual newsletter piece, it, to me, it's like, it is like killing two birds with one stone. It's like killing several birds with one stone because I can use that piece throughout the year. I don't just direct mail it at the start of the year to catch parents' attention and start planting the seed of here's an option for you with your kids' meal programs daily. But I also use it when I go speak at public civic events uh, like Rotary Clubs, Lions Clubs, things like that. I use it when I go present at the Board of Education meetings and refer to it. I use it when I go present at PTA and also at staff meetings, back to school nights. So it ends up becoming kind of a multi-use document to help tell your story. And it's also great, too, because if you're having trouble speaking in front of an audience, which is always difficult, it's nice to have them ha to hand them something to look at that has some brief little snapshot stories of some of the great work that you and your team are doing in your program. And as they're looking at it, then you can kind of talk to some of the things that you want to share on that. Uh, next slide. So like this for this past school year, um, we're real proud of the fact that through the Colorado Health Foundation and through the Live Well uh, culinary training that our staff has, uh, has received that we were able to receive a pretty good chunk of money, a half million over the course of three years to retrofit our kitchens to do scratch cooking, which is 36 different schools along with these beautiful new refrigerated stainless steel salad bars. Uh, we are right now in our second year of having these salad bars. And, and we kind of took a different approach, by the way, just a side note, is I was really concerned about the salad bar transition. And if some of you directors out there are still struggling with that decision because of maybe uh, foodborne illness uh, concerns or uh, norovirus being spread by kids or um, food safety concerns with things staying refrigerated, I would definitely recommend that route to go with a refrigerated stainless steel salad bar and look at re-engineering your service lines to include that in the line versus out in the cafeteria. I understand not everybody has that ability to be able to do that, but that's been helpful to have that as part of the line as they're going through it. But anyway, so we wanted to talk about that. It was real important for us to get that out. So we created our own, you can see it on the right side of the slide there, we created our own infographic uh, that I had my communications person uh, here in the district helped me create. I basically said, here's what I'd like to communicate. And, you know, that research shows that salad bars do the following things that you see on that slide shot. 
and it also gave me a chance to talk about some of our local sourcing and how much do we source within the area here on the western slope but also within the state of Colorado. Uh, also in that same brochure in that annual newsletter piece um, we talked about our continued work with the scratch made meal transformation but I also use it as a chance to also talk about online applications. All of us are challenge with that every year as we're asking everyone to reapply for those benefit programs unless they're forced or SNAP qualified. And so we have a piece, uh, another uh, section of the newsletter that, that encourages uh, households to do the earning online applications. And then we have, I always like to get, do the MyPlate messaging. Uh, so we'll usually do a story on MyPlate each year. This year we chose an article that we found on one of the USDA websites about pizza, that pizza can be looked at as a healthy version uh, for students, even though some conventional thinking might be that pizza is not healthy. And so we kind of raised that as a story and as a talking point with, with parents this past year. Uh, next slide. Oh, I'm sorry, can you go back real quick? I forgot to mention, it's kind of in small print there, but it's a, 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 an important note. Each of these five to six articles that we create and we pick for our, our talking points throughout the year, um, it, though we turn those into PDFs and then I send those out to all the building secretaries at all 36 schools and the secretaries like that actually I'm sorry it's not a PDF it's a word doc because then they can take that cut and paste that uh, those images and that content right into their school newsletter software and then we remind them about that at the start of each year and then keep checking in with them on that to hopefully make sure that they're including one of those six stories each month as they go throughout the year. And that's a great way uh, to multiply uh, the, the work that you've done on creating these article pieces uh, to make sure it's, it's being communicated throughout the year. Okay, next slide. And so definitely uh, so some of the other successes we talked about in our program, um, it's how the school meal transformation plays a key role. Uh, we, we're already, you know, the grant money that we receive through the Health Foundation, the fact that participation is uh, increasing now. Uh, we also talk about our new program we started two years ago, which is the Lunch Lizard Summer Meal Program, which has been a lot of fun. And it's been a great pro project and program in our school district. And I could talk all day about that. Um, but um, I would in invite you to Google Lunch Lizard and go check out the uh, our uh, web page on that. It's been a great partnership. We've increased so much publicity in the in the community uh, with that, with TV interviews, with coverage, even USDA Regional Mountain Plains Office uh, provided an award for our work on that in, in, the, in the last year. And uh, we've expanded it pretty significantly. As you can see in the data and the infographic on the top right, we two years ago in our pilot year served just 4,500 meals to all the high severe and reduced areas of the community and then went we basically quadrupled that uh, last year and now this year uh, we're actually looking to head into the mid 20,000 uh, meals uh, we've expanded the number of weeks we run the program uh, from nine to ten weeks we run up Monday through Friday we now have three food trucks um, uh, the food trucks have been all paid for by communities, uh, uh, businesses, and individuals who love the program, see that we're helping to um, provide food, uh, and it's really, it's a childhood hunger initiative, and so people are really want to be a part of that. So that's always been a good leverage point. So that's a talking, that one story is a, a talking point within the five to six stories that we have in our annual newsletter. And then the other one is the uh, the farm to school partnerships. I think it's always important, you know, but you can pick Colorado Proud Day like Rainy and them have suggested and promote that in September. And we've picked that always as an annual talking point. You know, what's the latest? Well, now we're working with some other farmers besides apple farmers in our community. And so we talked about who they are and some of those relationships. One of the stories I'm really excited about to talk about next year is we've actually working with a local farmer who's right now plant, uh, building uh, greenhouses so we can start sourcing lettuce and uh, romaine lettuce and cherry tomatoes year-round and so we're real excited about that and I'll definitely be leveraging the media uh, to cover that and talk more about that in future future articles okay next slide so then I use that piece and so all my efforts in June to build that piece and to build those five or six stories then I use that piece to build into these these food open house nights all of you 
maybe have uh, schools that perform back to school nights at the start of the school year, like Randy suggested at the outset of the webinar. Those are some great opportunities to catch your audience, uh, parents, staff, uh, adults, and children at the early part of the year to get the, the to, to uh, generate excitement on all the great work that you and your team are doing. And so we actually promote these food open house nights. Let us. Uh, and then get your staff involved. Mobilize your team at those schools and actually host a dinner. Uh, you provide the food. You provide the labor. Have your staff in their nice new chef jackets and and showing that off and showing off their great quality of food and showing off your new salad bars. And what better way to communicate the change in your program than to have parents and staff and and students come through uh, on the, on that one night? And of course, we'll have that same newsletter handing out. Uh, uh, and talking about some of those key stories that we've picked for that year. And yes, you can do it. So if those of you out there saying, no, you're not, you can't do that. You can't uh, do that in the school meal uh, program. You can't. I checked that with CDE. <laughs> uh, you, you, can, you can do that. So anyways, if you have a concern with that, contact me separately. I'll, I'll help you navigate that rule. Uh, the other one is, you know, your principals and PTA will love it. When you contact your school principals and you tell them why you want to promote your program and how it's going to fuel learning and hopefully increase student achievement and decrease the behavior issues you might be dealing with in your classrooms and that you'll donate this night to promote your program, they're excited because they don't have to worry about organizing that. They don't have to worry about spending money out of their small fundraising accounts to, to do that. So they're most of the time, in fact, 99% of the time, they're, they're definitely uh, open to the idea. We mostly focus those efforts, by the way, at the elementary level. And again, helps you highlight your scratch program. Uh, I already talked about some of these other bullet points already. Um, but yeah, we look at it as we want to convert these lunch packers into customers. You know, all of us are competing with the, which is great, parents have that choice that they can make each day, whether they want to pack a lunch or buy lunch. but. We definitely want to uh, convert those with showing them in these food open house nights that, hey, here's what your kids could be having. And like Dan Winton Peblo, uh, I took that idea from one of these Live Well presentations a year or two ago, and we actually did the same thing with the farmers and created the, the uh, life-size images of them and put those in all the service lines in the schools. And that's a great way to talk about the items that you're local sourcing and it also becomes your menu board and in fact anecdotally I can tell you on one school in particular they send me pictures every month and how they dress up their farmer uh, based on that month so if it's uh, you know March and it's St. Patty's Day then he's wearing a, a St. Patty's Day outfit so they have a good time with that so anyway so definitely uh, you want to build confidence in your program and then I usually end the presentations at each school I open house night with just a quick mission-driven closing point that this is how you we fuel learning your kids research shows that if they can have a nutrient they're able to choose their own items off of a salad bar and they can have a balanced my plate uh, nutrient dense meal that that will show increases in higher levels of learning and that's how you sell your program to the principals and to, uh, to other people the other thing I do in my newsletters is I stay away from negatively charged topics I don't talk about uh, you better pay your lunch bill or we're going to hold your kids tray. I don't address those kind of issues in the newsletter pieces. Uh, I think those topics are can be addressed in other forms. Next slide. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, that's it. Did you have anything else you wanted to add, Dan? Well, I think through the questions, I'll probably add some more, but I think the one thing that's kind of hit me right now, and Shannon kind of touched on it, and she's done that in your A in just the short amount of time that she's there, is that all the marketing you do will not matter unless you have a great food quality and you have great customer service. Right. It doesn't matter to go out and promote and market your program if you haven't taken care of that first. And Shannon, congrats to you for doing that in your program. Oh, thanks, Dan, but you're my rock star. <laughs> oh, you're too nice. Thank you. <laughs> so now we're just moving into a few questions. If you have a question you'd like to add to ours, um, go ahead and type that into the chat function. But I do have a few follow-up questions with both of you. So first of all, Dan, what would you recommend in terms of customer service? How, how did you fix that, so to speak? Oh, okay. Yeah, great question. Uh, 
Well, definitely we had, you know, at our startup meetings, and I think most people or most districts do your startup meetings each fall, and we usually pick a customer service topic to talk about. There's all kinds of content you can Google and find on the Internet to talk about, um, really, why do you do what you do? You know, why are your staff and sharing that and doing some training on that with them and not just showing some video, but getting them involved and letting them become interactive because it's real important if they're not friendly and they're not engaging the kids that come to the service line with smiles and, and, and being friendly. That can be one reason why they're packing lunch. And so we definitely uh, make a point to do uh, training on that each year. And throughout the year, I mean, we're constantly out with our field supervisors, uh, showing support with our teams, working there side by side with the teams and making sure that that is, is occurring. Just like a restaurant, you know, my former career was in the hotel and resort business. And if your food quality and your customer service isn't there, just like all of us, we pick the restaurants we eat at that we go to because of that. And so if you don't have that, then none of the other marketing is going to pay off. Excellent. Well, thank you for that. And Shannon, I just wanted to go back to your slide really quick. It's going to be about 10 slides back. And I wanted to just point something out here. Um, go back to speaking of food quality, I just wanted you to have a little closer look at Shannon's salad bar and her homemade bread because I thought they were extraordinary and I wanted to just complain and go right there right away. So Shannon, can you just talk about food quality and how that's making a difference with your marketing and how you're utilizing food quality to market your program? Um, sure, yeah, so, um, you know, as a chef, um, I realized that people are not gonna participate unless it tastes good, period. Um, and we all eat with our eyes first, so um, it's also gotta be beautiful. So I tried to create a very colorful, fresh, delicious salad bar, and uh, I promote some of the, um, like the homemade bread. We're not going to be able to do as much next year because we're cutting our budget, but the homemade bread, um, and when I hired my cook, uh, Amy, um, I let her know that we have to taste everything. Everything needs to be from scratch and we have to taste it because if we don't like it, they're not going to like it. So that is a, a quality control we do every single day. That's excellent. And when you said, Shannon, earlier when you said that um, you relied on, was it the secretary to help you get your marketing out? Is that right? I was curious who else has helped you with your marketing in your district and who those people might be. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a lot of help, um, <laughs> so I, I utilize my, my friend Kim is the school secretary, and uh, so I, I utilize her because she's very good, she's very talented. Um, our school menus look absolutely adorable compared to last year where they were very plain and simple. Um, and, uh, and then I also use my IT person, Dee, she's the one that, um, Bruce, my Facebook posts and post them for me and, and things such as that. Excellent. Excellent. I had one more question for you, Shannon, too, while I have you is you mentioned that you're all, you're comfortable bragging about your program, but can you give us a couple examples of where you just do that on a daily basis? Um, sure. So um, it's on a daily basis, I mean, I definitely talk it up to the students. I'm like, hey, make sure you try this new Chipotle mayonnaise. It'll go great with your chicken sandwich. Um, did you know that that is fresh chicken breast that we use? Um, have you, uh, and, and I just kind of try and talk up what we offer. By now, they, they kind of know that um, we, we have homemade croutons from our homemade bread. We have uh, all our salad dressings are homemade. And then another way is my community days that I do once a month. And uh, that's where I invite certain members of the community to come and eat lunch. And I pick a particular day that's going to be crazy yummy. And uh, one of those community days resulted in our police department has started an account with us. And they come eat here once a week. That's great. That's excellent. Thank you, Shannon. And um, Dan, I had a question for you back to, let's see. First of all, I love the whole idea that you pick a couple stories to focus on each year. And I also know 
that you're really comfortable getting up and presenting and talking about your program, but when I talk to food service directors, not everybody is. So how, what would you recommend to someone who's maybe not as comfortable about how to get started getting comfortable doing that? Yeah, well, first of all, just, you know, knowing your content in advance, I think definitely before you get up, having that, like I said, that piece where I've already spent time researching it, locating it, and, and then cutting it down maybe in wording and, and reviewing it, you, you, you'll gain comfort in making that that uh, that presentation when you have that. And by the way, I no means of these long-winded presentations. People don't want to hear a long lecture anyways. And so the other piece that I would do is just quick little bullet points. Just write down on index cards, just quick little bullet points of the key things that you want them to walk away with. What are the key nuggets of of things that you're doing, whether it's your scratch made meal program and then maybe it's a new recipe or a new menu that you've developed and and you're going to be pushing and promoting it that year or, or it's some of the other items that we've already talked about. Just write down kind of a key couple of bullet points and end with why. You know, why are we doing what we're doing? Well, we're doing what we're doing because we're, we're fueling successful learning and, and the research shows it and and by selecting us and making this part of your decision each day with your kids choosing school lunch it can help impact student achievement and, and of course the i think that that's to me what helps me out the most but i got to tell you um, out of all i probably do 40 to 50 tv interviews a year and another 20 to 30 other presentations between food open house nights and civic presentations I get just as nervous every time as I did the first time I did it. it. That part never goes away. Even today, I mean, I was nervous, and I'm still a little nervous now. And and so you're always going to have that. But I think the fact that you know how hard you work, you know how hard your team works, and that's what always motivates me. I know how hard my team works to take care of and provide uh, the food that we do every day in our schools, and I want people to know about that. I want to share that. That's my why. I want them to know that the hard work that we do to help ensure your kids successful and and that's what that's what helps to to drive me to to have the nerve to get up and, and talk about that excellent thank you dan and just one more question for you about your food open house nights it just sounds like a fabulous idea it sounds like a lot of work but it does sound like a great way to really persuade parents that school meals might not look like they did when they were kids um mm -hmm. That, I mean, that just it seems like a great idea. How hard is it to, to do this? It's not, yeah, I put it on the calendar. I, I, I'll set up the details with my team. We'll pick a menu and I'll put it on, a, on our Outlook calendar and I'll send that to that manager and that team. We've already trained on and communicated with them in advance. Here's why we're doing what we're doing. It's a great chance for you to market and promote your program at your school and to show off the great hard work that you and your team are doing. I'll come by and I'll talk with the parents in the cafeteria once everybody's assembled for just a couple of minutes. and I'll help do that part for you. I introduce the manager and the team at that school and everybody usually gives them a round of applause and, and I always fit in a little local sourcing topic into that, that little quick three, four or five minute bite. And it's amazing. Every time we do it, we get people coming up afterwards that are like, I had no idea. I had no idea that the school food had changed this much. I had no idea that you had these new wonderful salad bars and that you guys were doing quinoa salads and offering hard boiled eggs and, and other proteins now in your salad bar. I had no idea that the scratch food you're making is this good. And so that's a reward. That's great for my team and, and for myself to, to hear that. And yeah, that's what, that's how you build participation. To me, there's no other better way. You can do all the other great marketing tools that are here, and they help. Uh, but boy, getting them to come into your restaurant mm -hmm. and to see the work that you're doing, and and uh, to me is 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 the best way to, to promote your market, your program. And by the way, I have to mention when Shannon was talking about updating your sanit our sanitarium, looking kitchens and cafeterias. Uh, that's critical. I think that smarter lunchroom movement tool is very helpful, and I think definitely doing those things in your cafeteria to give it more of a look of a restaurant and treating it that way uh, is a great way to lo look at how to manage your program. And side note, definitely the Live Well pages that Randy, you and your team provide with all that content has been helpful for me in generating some story ideas. And then also Lunch Lessons, that website that Shannon referred to, we've used that one quite a bit in recipe development the USDA approved recipes and those are also great ways to um, 
to build your menu. Super on that terrific note, Dan, thank you. We'll wrap up and move on to just with a, a few more notes about the tools and where to find them. And thank you both so much for all this excellent content. And Dan, we will be able to share out that PDF if you want to share it with us as well. And oh, sure, okay. Super, and now I'm just gonna move on to just review a couple more tools that are available for you um, on the website. We talked about the invitations. Shannon has used our invitations for her community events. Uh, we have some talking points you can use to present your program. Again, we mentioned some of these other things earlier. I wanna to talk to you on this next slide about a new tool that we have available to you, which is our website tool. Many of you will spend some time this summer looking at your website and trying to figure out how to enhance it we put together a two-page tool and reference some of our terrific examples here in Colorado, one of which is Ray Adele over in Eagle Vale has a great website, and then Paula Boozer in Canyon City has another website, and we put together some tips and ideas for you on what to consider when you're building and expanding your website and making it all beautiful and attractive. So where do you find the tools? They're at the LiveWell Colorado website. And to get there, there's just a tiny bit of navigation. You'll need to tab over to the Healthy Schools link. I think on the next slide, we can actually show you what it looks like. So there's a Healthy Schools tab on the left, and you click on the School Food Initiative, which is one of our um, particular areas of focus, and then down to Online Resources, which is where the little girl is in the swimming pool on the right. We do ask for your name and your email address just so we can keep track of who visits our tools and utilizes them, but we don't share that information with anyone else. All the tools are available to you for free. They're downloadable and they come in both PDF and Word versions and you can customize them to fit your own needs. We're gonna be sharing with you today the resources that we mentioned throughout the webinar as well as Dan's PDF that he talked about. And we really just wanna thank you for joining us today for to all the food service directors pre and past to been on here and shared their great ideas with us uh, and all of you who are working diligently to support the health and well-being of Colorado's youth and to promote healthy school and fresh school meals. A special thank you to the Colorado Health Foundation for making this webinar possible and a big thank you to Shannon and Dan for taking time out of your very busy schedules at the end of the year to share your knowledge and wisdom and experience with others across Colorado. So I'm going to turn it back to Charlie now. All right, and we are going to share um, the recording of this webinar with everyone, as well as all of those different uh, resources that Rainey was just referencing. So unless anyone has any questions, we are set for the day. And I'm not seeing any questions, so thanks everyone for joining us.